So welcome to the Writer's Mindset series. I am Yvonne Redden and I'll be chatting to a variety of storytellers and writers to find out what inspires and motivates a writer and also what habits writers apply to get their books to their deadlines. So is it a particular mindset that you can develop or are writers born with this gift of storytelling? So when I was studying journalism, we were taught to write stories using the five W's, which is who, what, where, when, why. So this style of writing is really useful for news writing, but I feel that you can use it across all genres of writing, most styles. So my questions in this series, why I'm talking about this is, we're gonna incorporate the five W's into the questions. So my guest this week is the wonderful Jules Call. And Jules is a comedy screenwriter, best-selling author, and visual artist. Thank you for joining me today, Jules. I'm so happy to be here. Hello. Great. So I'm going to start with the first question, which is who? So who has been influ influential in your writing career? Or has there been anyone even? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Lots of people um, across the years. I suppose when it comes to comedy, um, my comedy hero of all time has always been Rick Mail. And I was very, very lucky and blessed to get to work with him before he passed away. Yeah. Um, so he would definitely be, when it comes to comedy writing, the fact that he's so outlandish and it's just so bonkers and mm. um, with his writing. I would say also Roddy Doyle. I mean... Roddy Doyle, genius, revolutionary, um, writing um, dialogue like I had never read dialogue like that before. Yeah. Um, and who else has influenced me? I guess um, the weird thing is with my own writing, like when it came to writing my autobiography, myself. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but hear me out. As in, I never considered myself a writer when I was young. And yet I kept loads of diaries. And yeah. when I went back and I read my own diaries, I found um, I found a writing in myself that reminded me of what I used to be. Because you know the yeah. way you don't kind of feel yourself aging over the years. And, and you, not you, you, know, yeah, you hope you aren't, but like yeah. sometimes you look in the mirror and go, who is that? <laughs> yeah, and you forget what your teenage self yeah. used to be yeah. like. So the fact that I had so much of that documented and I was able to go back into my diaries and remember what it was like to be that teenage girl. Yeah. Um, that was a great influence and help in, in, in my writing, definitely. And this is the book we're talking about, Flabberant. It's amazing cover. I love it. And tell people how long it took you to write this. I mean, many, how many pages is this? Uh, I, I'm not sure. I can't remember how many pages, but I remember I wrote 95,000 oh, words. Oh, my in God. Two months. That's amazing. But you know what? It's because I wrote it so fast because it's my own story. Yeah. So it's my own memory. So it's not like I had to really delve into going into my imagination. So I think that's why it was like opening a dam and I just went and out it came. And I would write some days, no joke, 12, 14 hours a day. I'd sit down at the computer and I'd be like a machine duh, 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 and it would just come out of me. That's incredible, was, isn't it? Because this is what I want to find out with this series is how do you do that? But maybe because it's writing about you and it's your story, it just kind of, it, it needed to be told. Yeah, it did. Absolutely. And I think there's an awful lot of people who get intimidated and think, I better go and do a course. I am not qualified to write a book because I haven't done all the study. Yeah. For it. I didn't do anything. Yeah. Okay. Nothing. I started off as a screenwriter. Mm. I didn't do any training. I taught myself how to do it. Yeah. And I went on to the BBC Writers Room website and it was this hub and resource to help writers. It was absolutely incredible. I studied scripts and the format of how they came and I just taught myself how to do it as we went along. Now when I look back on the early writing stuff and everything I go oh my god that was a mess but listen it got us somewhere mm. and from screenwriting then when I went to write my actual book and I was writing Flabberant because it was not my own story um, the publishers helped me kind of with the structure of things and how I should lay it all out. Yeah. But it was easy to write because it was my own story. Mm. And now at the moment I'm uh, writing my first novel. And again, I have no training in, uh, in any of this and I'm teaching myself how to mm. do it. Mm. And I think it's amazing to see how my mindset as a screenwriter has changed because of the tenses that I have to write in. So when yeah. you write a script, Mm. You are writing the action description for the mm. actors to read and for the director. So you are saying, 
Mary uh, walks into the room. She sees a strange man looking at her through the window. And you're giving all of the description. And you're trying to put it as condensed as possibly yeah. as you possibly can, but telling the director and the actor everything that they need to know for the scene. And then you let the dialogue flow in between. So I had trained myself to write that way. And then when I sit down to write the book that I'm writing at the moment, I'd write everything in the past tense. And I was like, oh, oh my God, this is so difficult to do. And be more but descriptive. Now, I know. And it, oh, But and you obviously have a gift. You've got a gift for both because you did the, the Damo and Ivor series. You wrote the script for that, didn't you? That was, yeah. I mean, that's her. Oh, it was amazing. So and it must be like there, you, you must have that mindset that you can switch, you know, depending on what genre you're working on, which is amazing. And like what your main, what is your main genre of writing and why do you like to write in that style? Um, I, my whole thing, everything has always been towards comedy Yeah. and um, finding the funny in everything. And I think I, it has been, well, it was at the start, it was a challenge when I started writing the novel that I'm writing at the moment, because all I wanted to do was write the dialogue. All I wanted to do was write funny things that people say. And then when I had to write all the flowery description that goes with it, I just wanted to vomit. I was like, ooh, I hate all this. And I don't want to write all big, fancy, highfalutin words that people use because I don't want to read that yes yeah. but again I mean I have to set the scene so at the yeah. start I, I'll be honest I find it intimidating mm. but I just told myself listen get out of your own way mm. and just you have to do this in mm. order to set the scene so the more I just stopped overthinking it the easier it became mm. and I then didn't overthink I, too much as well as a writer yeah oh absolutely yeah we intimidate ourselves mm. all the time going I can't do this mm. you know but you just um I just find that I just have to talk myself around yeah. and then I can just let my 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 comedy dialogue shine by just yeah. putting framing it and making it look beautiful and yeah. it has actually been easier than I thought that's brilliant and I think it's just about getting it all out there we don't have to think chronologically at the start I think people mm -hmm. think that has to run there and that chapter but just I think just write it all and then you can put it all together at the end. Do you know what I mean? I think oh, that's the absolutely. best. Instead of procrastinating and going, I, I'll wait, just do it. Just write it all down and then you put it all together. You know, I think that's the best way to write as well, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Just get it out there. Put get it out. On the yeah. Yeah. Just start. Absolutely. And is there a location that you like to write in? Like, or do you write anywhere? <laughs> Welcome to my lair. Uh, this is my, uh, this is the box room at home. Studio room. Um, my <laughs> art studio, because I oh, work yeah, art art. stuff, yes. The art, yeah. the art pays the bills, the writing yeah. does not pay the bills. Yeah. Um, so this is, so I'm surrounded now by loads of shelves and art supplies, left, right and centre. So this is where I write and I love the ritual that I have when mm. I come in here. What so is I it? I've got a very comfortable chair, yeah. right there. Uh, first thing I do is I light a candle. I have like a little Buddha statue there with a little candle thing in front of me. So I light the little tea light. I light a stick of incense. And then I have this little aromatherapy. Um, I don't know what it's called. And I put two drops of that in my hands. I rub my hands together and I smell it. And I'm like, oh, I'm so zen and I'm ready to write. And then I have my laptop in front of me and I put it up at a height. Yes. Um, just literally on a cardboard box here yes. in sort of a stand. And I found that when the laptop was down on the desk, I'm down like that. And my neck and my shoulders yeah. get knackered after a while. And if I'm not comfortable, mm. then I will start to go, oh, oh, like this. And it will, yeah. it interferes with my writing and the length of time that I can write. Yeah. So I decided I would prepare a space for myself that mm. um, is as comfortable as possible yeah. so that I can like, write for long periods of time. So because the laptop is straight ahead of me there mm. and... Uh, thank God I learned how to type in school. I remember when they taught us how to type in school, I was like, oh, on a typewriter, I was like, I'm never going to need this. That's so stupid. But now I can obviously look at the screen and, uh, and I know. fly. Because that's a gift in itself, it isn't it? So that you're not looking down all the time. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So straight ahead yes. so that my neck is up straight, my posture is good. And then I, my neck won't get tired so I can write mm. like for much, much longer. Mm. Loads of water and just peace around mm. me. Yeah, and tranquility. Yeah, and I don't really write anywhere else. I lived in Sligo for a year. I went down there to write. And that was beautiful because one of the things that I find on the days of where there isn't a flow coming, it's because I'm too much in my head. So yeah. I need to get myself grounded. Mm. So what I do is I just go out into nature, reconnect with the earth mm. and stop thinking, thinking, thinking. Mm. 
and that will bring me back to centre yeah. and then I can sit down and let the flow come again. And are you a morning writer? Like, do you do morning pages yeah. or anything like that? Or do you like to write in the evening? Like, is there a time? Um, morning. Yeah, yeah, always morning and I'll write like all throughout the day and obviously I'll take breaks in between. Yeah. And then in the evening, sometimes I get an extra burst. But there are days when I can't write and mm. there are days when I am super tired. Like yesterday afternoon, I was sitting right here like this, with my head not yeah. like that. Just, what are you doing? You're too yeah. tired. Yeah. Step away. So exactly. I'll walk away from it and then I'll come back a few hours later. Yeah, there's no point in writing when you're like that. You have to be in the frame of mind. You know? Totally, yeah. I was just Absolutely. going to ask you, the next question was when, when is the best time to write? And you've answered that. Yeah. So tell me, why do you write? And do you think you need a certain type of mindset to write? In your opinion. Why, why I write is because it is my greatest passion. Nothing makes me feel more alive. And while like for the last couple of years, I've been working as an artist and I love doing that and it brings me a lot of joy. And I had been so busy with the art that I hadn't written in ages. And mm. a friend of mine got a publishing deal for her book. And I'll be totally honest, I was so jealous. I, went, oh my <laughs> God. I want that feeling that she has. Yeah. And uh, I had been working on bits and bobs, but I've been distracted with other things. And life, you know, it gets in the way. Sure it does. Um, and, so I said to myself, right, that's it. I'm clearing a space. So I said, I'm going to take some time off work to sit down and write this. It was originally a, a TV script that I was writing. I was like, no, I'm going to turn it into a book. So I made the space to do it. And when I sat down and I started writing, my heart sings. Like I just yeah. feel so much joy, so much passion, the feeling and the knowing of this is yeah. what I do best. Yeah. This is what just lights up my spirit, yeah. makes me feel like it's easy. It's not work at all. Brilliant. It just, um, it just makes me feel so good. So and it's, it's in you then, it's ingrained in yeah. you. Do you know, this is my whole thing. I think you've had it from when you were younger with your diaries and it's just developed from there. So I think it is something, but I think it is something that you can develop as well with some maybe courses, but you have the natural writing instinct in you by the sounds of it. Yeah, and I mean, it, it's not easy. Like, you know, mm. you have to hustle, you know, yeah. to get your, your your work out there. And you have to hustle even past yourself. Like yeah. I was saying, you have to get out of your own way. You yeah. know, we have this whole thing all the time. Well, you know, it'll never be perfect, so I won't even start. Yeah. Do you know in a way that there's yeah. a huge mindset with that? So you yeah. just have to get things through you and get it out there. And I think if you are a natural writer, yeah. it just, um, it makes you feel so good that it becomes addictive, you know? Yeah. And yeah. like I say, it, it feels easy. It's yeah. just like, there's no struggle to it. I'm not trying to do, like, I couldn't sit down here and do maths. I'm just like, oh, I don't know anything about that. Whereas there's other people who go, oh yeah, and that's their thing. And then yeah. when you're a writer and it is your thing, and I've known that for my whole life, mm. that um, even just straight after school, what I wanted to do, I went to art college and I trained to be a special effects makeup artist because that's what I wanted to do. So it's always been something creative for me. Yeah. Yeah. If I don't let that creativity flow, Mm. I go mad. Yeah. I go absolutely mad if I don't let it out every once in a while. Yeah. And I think you're either, like, I've done office jobs, lost my mind. Yeah. I've tried the secure road of going, maybe I could have a job that gives you the right amount of money every single month. And I, I can't do yeah. it. I think I when you're creative, you're creative. You have to find yeah. that. Up. My first job was hairdressing. So uh, that, that's been my creative I think I have the, the creative but you do you'll find somewhere that you can you can go first and then you'll get your you'll find your path eventually won't you oh absolutely yeah and is there any advice that you can give to new emerging writers that you maybe that you wish someone had told you along your journey um I would say um don't worry so much about the spellings and the grammar and the crossing of the T's and the dotting of the I's and the inverted commas and where a comma goes. And, oh, is that the right way to say that? Ah, that's where proof readers come in, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. There are specialised people like you <laughs> who are absolutely brilliant at it. And um, I think I used to let that interrupt my flow. Yeah. And also because I'd be going, is it? Uh, bear that in mind b-e-a or or uh, B -A or I know. No, and all those things and i go off and i google them and everything trying to get it all right yeah. and you know there's, there's proofreaders your publisher you know down road helps you with all of those things mm. so i think with formatting and the kind of the ins and outs of those things i used to worry about it a lot whereas it's more about the content yeah it's more about what is there and mm. you don't have to worry about all of those things that they're um, there you know all them being being yeah. oh my god yeah yeah 
Yeah. And I think especially when you're somebody like me who doesn't have all that formal training where um, it's just something that I find, you know, I worried about when I, I didn't need to at all. Yeah. Um, and the other advice that I would have would be to hustle, to know that there is no such thing as a magic publishing fairy who's going to knock on your door someday and go, are you writing something in there? Yeah. You have to hustle and put it out yeah. there, left, right and centre. And you yeah. have to not give up on your dream mm. and push it and push it and chase it and elbow everybody out of the way. And it's hard and going, isn't it? Because you can fall oh. back and go, oh my God. I and some people don't have that natural in instinct to do all that and it is and, and it puts people off especially yeah, the it inside to us yeah but it is just something that comes with it because they're not going to come looking yeah. for you you have to chase yeah and chase and email and email and network and you know make contacts and put yourself out there and yeah. that is you know sad but true I know. And don't give up. And I think networking is huge. You know, we have social media. Networking is key. You've got to network with the right people and get yourself out there, I think, for sure. And Absolutely. yeah, and it is hard work, but you'll get there in the end if you really, really believe in your in what you want to get out there. Yeah. Now, finally, can you name three books that you have by your bedside table or that you are reading currently? OK, well, I've just finished Snowflake by Louise Nealon, oh, and I yes. loved it. Absolutely Perfect. brilliant. Yes. Um, and I know that she, she, with her publishing deal, she did a deal for the film. I'm not sure if it's going to be film or TV series uh, for the rights with Elman Pictures. And as I was reading it, her description is so spectacular that mm. I could visualise. Well, I suppose as well, because I come from the world of TV and film. Anyway, I, as I read it, the whole time I was just visualising um, it on screen and oh, oh yes. you've done a beautiful job with it and it's absolutely amazing and mm. um, I've also just finished another book called Charlotte I cannot remember the name of the author and I should know but I um I read and um and listen to audiobooks because I love when the actor um just brings the voices to life mm. um and also because it just saves time because you know if I'm in the car and I listen to audiobooks as well so Charlotte is um a book written I'm obsessed with Jane with um, Jane Austen absolutely yes. obsessed and Charlotte is a book that's written as if um so in Pride and Prejudice one of the um characters in it Charlotte this author has decided let's tell the story from her perspective and mm. what happened afterwards as her life carried on yeah. so she's taken liberty with Jane Austen's writing and gone off and written a story so I listened to the audiobook of that and the actor who performed the whole thing was amazing absolutely brilliant it was very good I won't say it was brilliant but mm. that's just an, an, an honest opinion yeah um what else am I reading? Oh, um, Dermot Whelan's Mindful is oh, I've on. I've heard it's amazing, yeah. Yeah, I've started. I bought it a few weeks ago. I'm still sitting there. I'm going to start yeah. that soon. And then the next one is Sinead O'Connor's oh, autobiography. I know. Yes, I, know. I have heard rave reviews. Yeah. And I don't know. I think I'm going to listen to the audio book first because there's so yeah. many people raving about um, how brilliant she is in um, narrating it. Story. So yeah. I think I'll listen to it first and then read it afterwards. Yeah. And I, yeah, I know it, it sounds amazing. And I think as well, if, and there's another, what you just said there about the, the podcast and the audibles. It's another area that you can go into as a writer. You don't actually have to get your it in print you can you yeah. can even do it yourself if you have that good storytelling voice or get someone to do it some of the podcasts are amazing aren't they Jules I love oh, them. they're so brilliant yeah. when people when when the actor really gets it and brings yeah. it to life oh my god it's amazing I'd say the greatest audiobook that I've ever listened to is called The Other Bennett Sister again it's another Jane Austen and um what this author did was she took Mary from the Bennett sisters of Pride and Prejudice yeah. and told the story from her perspective. And then again, what continued on in her life. It yeah. is like just incredible. I would put it like obviously Pride and Prejudice. I'm obsessed with it. Mm. I would put it right up there with like as good as the original. Wow. It is great. that good. Yeah, well, they're great amazing. recommendations. Wow, that's brilliant. Because not everyone will be reading stuff. I mean, a lot of writers always have their books beside them. So that's why I was interested to see what people are reading. Jules, that's amazing. There's lots of information there for people watching this. And it will help people immensely, I'm sure. Where can people find you? I, I know you're a visual art. You can, if you want to give some links for that and where people can find all the info. 
Sure. So I've got a website, which is just my name, jewelscalls.com. Yeah. And that is my general website that links to my art website. There's a link there because my book, Flabyrinth, is now out of print. But before um, I got, I think I got 40. Yeah, there it is. They gave me 40. I got 40 copies of it um, that were just the last ones that were left in the warehouse. So I, they were like, there's 40 left here. You know, I said, I'll take them all. Thanks very much. Yeah. They gave them at a knockdown price. I was like, I'll keep them for the grandchildren and they're up in the attic. So whenever anybody contacts me, because they still do, um, a, a lot of people before they go for um, gastric bypass surgery, um, they want to read the book and they say, I can't find it anywhere. So what I've done is I've just put a link on my website where people can buy it directly through Great. me. Because it is an amazing weight loss journey. And you did a video on your journey with, with RT as well, didn't you? Yeah, I made a whole documentary series um, with RT called Nine Stone Lighter. Yeah. And um, before I went for gastric bypass surgery, I started looking up online to see, oh, is that, can I watch videos on YouTube? And there was nothing there from an Irish perspective. It was all yeah. American. Yeah. So anyway, I talked to um, RT and they sent a camera crew and followed my whole journey. And that sparked what oh, unbelievable stuff yeah. um, and led to the writing of my book. And I never thought at the age of 35 that I could have lived a life that was bonkers enough to warrant my entire autobiography. But as it turned out, it did. And it was the story of my whole weight loss journey, yeah. but also the story just of my whole life. Yeah. And I was so lucky that my mum documented uh, myself and my two brothers, our whole lives, we used to call them our baby books, and she wow. would write down every funny thing that we said, every mad thing that we did, she would write them all down. So they were essentially diaries of our entire lives. Yeah. And then I had my own diaries and everything to look back on. And I suppose one of my only regrets in life is that I stopped writing those diaries in my 20s and 30s and now 40s because they're priceless, absolutely priceless to look back on. I so know. funny. You know, you forget what you like. You and forget just, all your stuff. Yeah. And your memory you know memories are there but like the writing I know and maybe that's an idea I'll do myself with my own young children because there is so many things that they say and you forget and it'd be lovely to look back and that's amazing your mother did that wasn't it yeah and they're absolutely hilarious as well and you know I never really considered myself I always thought oh I started writing only really in my 30s when I started yeah. writing scripts but when I went back and looked at all of that and all the poetry and everything from my teenagers I was like oh my god I was a writer I used to write these uh, they were like sexy erotic novellas and I used to write them in school and sell them to the girls That's and I had, it. <laughs> no I had no idea what I was talking about absolutely none whatsoever and I used to write these romantic stories that were really outlandish and totally over the top like Nils and Boone stuff Jules and, and Boone. Sell them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'd sell them to the girls for a pound. And Look at you with the hustler. Back. You're you're hustling yeah. started then, Jules. What? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Exactly. And then I kept them all, and I and they we were so brilliant because then when it came to writing flabberings and I was concluding all my teenage diaries, I put in one of the uh, <laughs> the stories. It was called Steam. And people you say to me all the time that my favorite part in the whole book, of just reading Steam, was the best part of the whole book because it was just oh. so fun. That's no, brilliant. You know, so, uh, look, it was in you. Like, obviously, your mother had a gift as well, by the sounds of it. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, she's never done anything like formally or published or anything like that, but she is naturally yeah, a. Well, I can see the jewels called Baby Diaries coming out soon. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. it'll be brilliant yeah. Jules it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you and um, many thank thanks for your time so your website is your main um contact point anyway isn't it yeah it's just jewelscall.com yeah. and everything links to everything there yeah brilliant so thank you so much and if anyone mm -hmm. would like to contact me I'm across most social media platforms or follow me on YouTube where you'll find these videos and see you next time on the writer's mindset thank you Jules thank you bye